Hi, I'm Cameron Stevenson of the Levin Papantonio Law Firm. Here at Levin Papantonio, one of our primary goals in providing the very best and most effective legal representation to our clients is simply to keep them informed and to help them understand exactly how their claim will progress through what can be a very complex and confusing litigation process. This goal is especially important in the highly specialized and complex world of medical malpractice litigation. Over the last 10 or so years, the Florida Legislature has made it increasingly difficult, time-consuming, and expensive for injured patients in this state to recover deserved financial compensation for their injuries sustained at the hands of their health care providers. Perhaps the biggest of these hurdles is something called the pre-suit screening and investigatory process, which is required by Florida statute and must occur before a claim can even be filed, or else the judge will completely throw out the claim. Under Chapter 766 of the Florida Statutes, the pre-suit screening and investigatory process must begin with what is called a Notice of Intent to Initiate or Commence Litigation. This must be timely filed and served with the health care provider. This notice, prepared by the injured patient's reviewing attorney, essentially must do three things. First, it must identify the at-fault doctor or nurse that provided negligent medical care and treatment. Second, it must explain the medical care and treatment that was in fact negligent. And third, it must include a separate, verified medical opinion stating that there is a reasonable basis to believe there is medical negligence in this case. This verified medical opinion must come from a qualified physician medical expert who practices in the same or similar specialty as the at-fault medical provider in your case. Procedures such as these pre-suit requirements now mandated by the Florida Legislature are extremely important to understand, not only because a case cannot be brought in the first place unless these procedures are strictly followed, but also because of the time-consuming and very expensive nature of these procedures. While pre-suit procedures like these requirements sound good on their face, the reality is that they only prevent legitimate injured patients from bringing legitimate claims. By making them so expensive and so time-consuming, that people simply don't file or give up after the filing has started. For example, even in cases where medical negligence or even reckless medical conduct is apparent, the injured patient and their attorneys are forced to waste valuable time, effort, and resources having to jump through these practically meaningless hoops. As you might imagine, requirements such as these prevent most lawyers from even taking on medical malpractice cases. Again, even when there is readily apparent negligence or even gross or reckless medical conduct. Now, in the event these hurdles can be overcome, the pre-suit process is still not over. At this point, the at-fault provider has now been delivered the notice of intent along with the verified medical opinion. Next, the case basically stops dead in its tracks to give the at-fault provider 90 days to investigate and prepare his or her defense. At the end of this 90-day pre-suit period, the at-fault medical provider must do one of two things. Either attempt to resolve the case by providing the injured patient with financial compensation or simply deny the claim outright. Finally, after all this time and effort, a formal medical malpractice lawsuit can begin. As you might imagine, even in cases of glaring medical negligence and reckless medical conduct, pre-suit claims are denied 90% of the time forcing the filing of an actual lawsuit. When so many claims fail to be resolved in the pre-suit process, even with a verified medical opinion from another doctor stating that there was medical negligence in this case, one must ask whether or not the pre-suit process is truly serving its intended goal to prevent meritless claims. The answer is clearly no when 90% of the time the claim is failed to be resolved in pre-suit despite another doctor saying that there was negligence. As a result of statutory mandates, such as the exhaustive pre-suit process in medical malpractice cases, many lawyers have simply walked away from medical negligence cases, leaving injured patients no place to turn. Because these cases are simply too expensive, time-consuming, and difficult to pursue. Here at Levin Papantonio, myself and Virginia Buchanan are dedicated to representing injured patients and their families who have been the victims of medical negligence. We will continue to help them receive the financial compensation they deserve and are entitled to, as well as to continue to fight for the rights of our clients that the Florida Legislature has seemingly been so adamant and determined to take away. 
When you choose Levin Papantonio to represent you in your medical malpractice case, you choose lawyers and a law firm that not only have the financial resources to litigate medical malpractice claims, but also, and more importantly, we have the knowledge and experience to successfully navigate through a very specialized and complex litigation process that the majority of lawyers and law firms simply do not possess. If you believe that you or a family member have been the victim of medical malpractice, please give us a call so that we can help you get the financial compensation you're entitled to receive.